I can't even wake up without you sitting on my chest, can I? Good morning, Jaw. Good morning, Jaw. Look at that face. My buddy, look at that tail. You're having a good day already, and you just woke up, didn't you? This guy. Jaw, say hi to your buddies. That'll work. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, look at you. You even moved. Now you're not on my chest. Now you've decided since I was checking my email that you needed to get up and get my face. Get out of here. I do miss you, Jaw, because I haven't seen you much the last two days, but this is a bit ridiculous. I know. I like you, too. You're cool. We got a real treat in my house today. I didn't realize I had a bag of this left, but this is probably my favorite coffee ever. The Frosty's favorite. That or uh, First Snow by this company, Boca Java. They're not a, uh, they do not pay for ads. I just happen to love their product and I love sharing it with people. This is the holiday blend, so you can't get it all the time. So I was, and it's butterscotch flavored, which is awesome. Yeah, I didn't even realize I had it in there. I had a stack of bags and went through them, and there it was. So that's today's roast of the day. Guys, I, I forgot to tell you this. I really wanted to share this um, this show that I've been watching the last couple nights with you. I actually had found it um, probably two or three years ago, I, and I feel like I found the first season on Netflix, and I never knew they did a second season. It was called Thumbs Up America, and... It's probably not suitable for kids because there's a lot of cussing and um, it's a graffiti artist and he does like, sometimes he'll do like kind of pornographic graffiti or he'll find graffiti and he'll outline it or whatever. But basically what it is, is it's two guys that decide they're going to hitchhike from one place to another place. Like the first season, which was the season I only knew about, um, was that they were hitchhiking from Los Angeles to like uh, trying to get to Canada. And their only deal is they will not pay for a ride. They can find ways of making money along the way um, and get free rides. They can accept free hotel rooms and stuff like that if they go through like Vegas or something. But um, they can't pay for anything um, other than, yeah, I don't know if they can pay for food or not. They don't really show meeting, but um, like where they stay, they like, they break into abandoned buildings and sleep there and stuff. It's just a really interesting show. And um, now, I didn't even realize it, but Vice picked them up and they made two other seasons. The third season, I haven't got to watch yet, but they hitchhiked through China. The uh, second season, they hitchhiked from Tijuana to Alaska. Uh, and these guys are actually really entertaining. And here's the crazy thing. I thought it was just these like two random guys you've never heard of. Well, the first season was that. But what happened was um, one of the guys, David Cho, um, he... He does graffiti. He's the guy that does graffiti all over this this thing. And um, I believe it was Google, in their infant days, hired him to do graffiti all over their offices. And they said, we can either pay you, and it was a real low amount of money, or we can give you stock. He opted for the stock and became a millionaire, multi-millionaire from it. And um, so now he just kind of randomly will do weird podcasts he's a really far out there guy but it's a really interesting show if you're ever looking for something just to like go down the rabbit hole and you like seeing parts of the country that you can't see any other way look up thumbs up america um it might be called like hitchhiking across america or whatever but it'll be um probably with a vice logo or whatever it's definitely worth checking out but if you're used to like a pg content or a g content you probably won't enjoy that part of it but it's really interesting just to give a little bit of a shout out, that's how you can find it. That's kind of what you're looking for. That's David Cho right there, that guy. And uh, a lot of the episodes will have him and his uh, cousin, the guy in the tie-dye shirt that wears a coonskin cap. They travel around with like a miniature drum set on their backpack and a guitar. And they'll just stop along the side of the road and just start playing songs. And they have a guy who basically, it comes off like a vlog. The guy just walks along with them and um, films them. Uh, hopping into train cars, sneaking into semis and stuff to get rides. It's pretty out there, man. It's really crazy. Well, I've decided what we're going to do today, and I think it'll be a lot of fun, is uh, I'm going to go visit a couple of the remaining locations from Charlie Chaplin's The Kid. And um, 
This is kind of one of the very first scenes in the movie. Um, as far as, I mean, it is the first scene that we see the tramp, Charlie. This is the alleyway. It's right off Hollywood Boulevard. You wouldn't even know it was there if you weren't a fanatical lunatic like me because they don't have anything there to commemorate it or anything. But um, it's a little alleyway and it's where we first see Charlie come walking down the alley. Do, 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 do. And that's where he finds little John. He finds the little baby. And uh, it's pretty cool. I've been over there before because um, there's like different bars in that alleyway now. Um, and like eateries and stuff and I've met up with people for happy hours there but I never knew that that alley was this. Um, so let's go take a look. It's gonna be great. And I brought our little pal with me too. It's gone. Well, once we get done seeing this location, I'm gonna take Jaw home and then I'm gonna, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna drive or if I'm gonna hop on the train. But I'm going to go down to the Chinatown area because that's where um, some of the other locations, there's not many left. The house from the movie I can't get in to show you because uh, it's in a gated community. And it's unfortunate because the house directly across the street from it was Muhammad Ali's house when he lived out here um, for a while. I believe it was like he was living in that house for like 15, 20 years. Oh, you missed it. It was a headless walk symbol. Just as I turn my camera on, the, uh, the the walk symbol switched, but it was a uh, the walking guy symbol and the head was gone. The world famous Pantages. There's the lobby to the Pantages. Okay, to find it, you want to go just past the, uh, see there's the Knickerbocker over there. You want to go just past Ivar, if you're coming from the west side, or I mean the east side. Just past Ivar to a little uh, little half street called Cosmo up here where the IOS, the improv little school is. Got some drone activity. Okay, this is the IOS. And then here's Cosmo. And they actually put this building here that wasn't here when the actual filming took place. So the, uh, the alleyway, you have to walk through a parking lot to find it. It's right up here by where these... Uh, these cages are. You make a right into there. So you come right through here, and then I want to kind of show you the camera for uh, the whole filming of this episode or this movie would have been kind of right down in here in this parking ramp. And so what you see, and actually, no, it would have been more over here. This building and everything is in the way. But what you see is you see um, the second window right here is the window that the lady, uh, we see the tramp come walking down this little uh, alleyway right here. And you see the lady from the second window up there throw her garbage out the window. And you can line it up because you can still kind of see where the posts, there's a post there, and then there would have been one right there. And this stairwell and everything would have been right here where this is closed up. Now these are all businesses. But it would have been like the apartments. And uh, so you would have actually seen Charlie come walking down through here. Straight down through there and he would have gone past. And that's where he would have found the kid. And so most of the shot, you basically see this alleyway. You see him finding the kid. He comes walking down, then we see the woman with the stroller comes from this direction. And he tries to pawn off the kid on her. When they go walking up this alley, and then you end up seeing him walk down in this, right here in this intersection kind of area is where um, he and the police officer end up meeting up. And so that whole little chase ensues right up through here.
and then it goes out onto Hollywood Boulevard. But there's also an alley right here, and uh, we end up seeing, at the very end of that scene, we see the tramp go walking down that alley out onto that street. Now it's a parking lot area and everything, but this building wouldn't have been there at all. And right there is where we would have seen most of the camera shots and everything would have been focused with this in the background. Now this intersection actually, two other famous, um, a Harold Lloyd picture and a Buster Keaton picture happened here. One was right out there in the middle of the street, right where that silver car is parked. We actually see the camera pointed towards me. And then the other is a, uh, a car parked right over here in the Harold Lloyd feature, I believe. And I'm probably gonna do those at some other point, but yeah, apparently this little alleyway over here was used for quite a bit back then. And there's the drone again, a block away from me, from where I was. So we're gonna head back now. I'm gonna go drop Jaw off and then we're gonna uh, find our way down to Chinatown and then to Olvera Street. Isn't it a shame though that that classic whole intro to the movie took place right there and there's no plaque, there's no nothing to commemorate it. You'd never even know it was there. And this is the Los Angeles Del Close Theater. Del Close, if you don't know anything about him, was like a, uh, he was kinda like the grandfather of improv. And he was based out of Chicago, I believe. This is, the IOS, the Improv Theater, and so they've dedicated it to him. The go -see. see the headless walk sign. If you're ever looking for camping, this shopping plaza is apparently a good place. He's taking a little bit of a break in the shade. Our sidewalk has sprinklers on it that we're going to cross, and I don't think he's going to want to go. Let's try it. Okay, let's go. So far, so good, huh? This is probably like getting rained on to him. Actually, dude, as hot as it is out here, I'll bet you, you actually like that. And we are in Chinatown now. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the kid was actually filmed down here in Chinatown, but over the years, starting in 1934, many of the buildings and the places that they filmed were raised. And right here was one of the main sections where they had filmed um, the kid standing on the corner and the cop coming up and tapping him on the shoulder. It's all gone, but have no fear. The alleyway that we already went to up in Hollywood is not the only alleyway left. And luckily for us, the two alleyways that do survive are home to the two most important moments of the movie, I think. The one that we already saw, which is kind of how we're introduced to the tramp when he's walking down the alley and he ends up finding the, the baby he will later adopt and name John in that alley. And then over on Oliveira Street, if you can believe it. So let's go over to Oliveira Street and I'm gonna show you I've taken you over there before, showing you like the, the whole Mexican heritage street, but it didn't always used to be that way. It used to be just an old run down dirt alley. And let's go see it now. Now the reason I showed you this is because the reason that they raised a lot of those buildings that were used in the kit, it was to make room for the train station and the freeway that would eventually cut through here. And to get over to Oliveira Street, we get a cut through Chinatown, which is awesome. And here we are, back over on Oliveira Street. God, and it's so hard to believe. I didn't know it when I was over here, or else I would have told you guys that. But I didn't find it out till recently. I was trying to look up some of the uh, locations for the kid just to see if anything was still around. And then I found out that first one that we went to, which was actually my old stomping grounds. Well, kind of my current stomping grounds. And then I found out that right over here, and I'll actually match up the exact door is still here. Now, where this happens in the movie is right after they've tried to take away 
John, and uh, they have that big fight up in the apartment. Then um, Charlie eventually does that whole routine of going across the rooftops. And uh, as he's going across all the rooftops, he eventually comes down, hops on the orphanage truck that's come to take John away. And he hops on, kicks the orphan guy off. And then the truck pulls up right up here. And right here is where we would have seen the car parked. You can see the uh, buildings. This whole, all these uh, merchandise carts weren't here. But look, they even have a little memorial to it. Check this out. If you're lo here looking for it, it's a W22. And it's right here. See? Reminiscing. The heart-tugging reunion of the kid played between Charlie Chaplin, Little Tramp, and his adopted son, Jackie Coogan, remains one of the most emotionally charged scenes in all of film history. Remarkably, the setting for this iconic scene remains standing and is passing unknowingly by hundreds of tourists every day. As shown here, the reunion took place on Olivera Street, a colorful Mexican marketplace and cultural center. And I'm sorry about all the sunshine. This is really difficult to block out, but right there and I'll come back out here and we'll match it up with those two and this and the grate and everything and there's the kid and Charlie hugging after they're reunited once the car stops and that's when he's first taken from the apartment before they start going and there's Jackie Coogan who would later be Uncle Fester in the Adams Family and also in one of the most memorable um, episodes of the Brady Bunch the one where he has the neck brace on and Mike Brady ends up saving the day by throwing the briefcase down. So you can see right up here, are those two windows. And the line, see right there? I'm trying to block it out a little bit. But you can see that. so. The car actually would have been parked right here where this ATM and these stained glass windows and everything were. Right up here. So let's go take a look at this one more time. And I'll even put some of the footage from the movie in, of course. See how we can see the... those two, and then the, the ones on the side. There they are, and there's the doorway. Right there. There they are, and there's the doorway. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? I'll bet you a lot of you didn't even know this was here. Like I said, I, I've lived here how long in my life, and I didn't know this was here? right there where the ATM is, right at the base of the doorway. Wow, that's so cool. Guys, make it a point to come out here if you've ever seen the movie. Or if you love Charlie Chaplin, this is maybe one of the most iconic scenes left. Like I said, this was just one of those. It's probably the most well-known Chaplin movie. And it was so important because Charlie wrote it, directed it, composed all the music, starred in it, casted it. He just loved Jackie Coogan when, from the moment he met him. And 
you can you can understand why he just had so much charisma as a little kid and it would have happened right there can you believe there's a credit union thing there now well I'm back in my neighborhood got a little bit of time to kill before I have to go work tonight decided to take jaw over to the uh, the puppy store tail waggers because today is usually the day they have pet adoption so they have a bunch of puppies in there roaming around he can go and play and explore with guys he's a beggar look at him they already gave him treats and he's up here thinking they'll forget we're out of here this guy is advertising himself as a people walker seven dollars a mile that's not actually a bad idea that's kind of a cool looking tree with the helicopters going overhead and a motorcycle. Well, I'm on my way to work in this traffic. 12 miles an hour. Wah, wah. All right, I just pulled into a parking area downtown and uh, I just wanted to say, if you decide to go watch Thumbs Up, just be warned, like I told you, it is not a PG or G rated show there's a lot of vulgarity and let's just put it up with if you find howard stern offensive i wouldn't watch it myself if i were you but it's a great show it's really interesting wow what street art man Whew. all right lion hearts i'm here i'm here to work and uh i'm gonna call it a night because i'm gonna be working until one o'clock and then i have an early morning of fullest of things to do tomorrow and um, I don't want to be messing with this, so I'm going to call it a night. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the, uh, the two alleyways from Charlie Chaplin's The Kid. And, you yep, know, no April Fool's jokes here. Not that kind of person. Nothing against it, just not that kind of person. So hope you guys have a great night, and uh, I hope this was worth your time. Please give it the, uh, the old thumbs up, like, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow. From your old pal Jordan the Lion, have a great night.